Hi guys, it's uh, D6 Evolution here. I'm Wes and this is Andy. And today we're going to be talking about speeding up your tournament play. Yeah. It's kind of topical right now. I know lots of like the ITC and stuff are going towards chess cocks for their top tables yeah. um, to prevent that. Have you yeah. experienced much slow play yourself? <sighs> Not a huge amount. You mean myself slow playing people, oh, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's your second tactic, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> if you can't Go win. forward and then slow play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. This is what I'm going to be known for. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, Right, so let's break it out. Let's talk about let's talk about sort of pre-tournament, what you can do to get yourself organised for it, and uh... yeah, so I, I think there's lots of things that you do, and I think slow play is something that we've all been guilty of at times. Mm. But actually, making yourself as more prepared for the tournament, uh, yeah. the better. So it, it's not usually intentional, is it? No, mm. I, I've had a couple of guys slow play I me. Mean, definitely intentional, um, well, as much as yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but actually, I think the first one really is knowing your rules, yeah. and that's probably the first unintentional slow play that most guys do. Yeah, che checking your codex every couple of minutes is not acceptable. Yeah, so just know your rules going through that, yeah. and actually, something you can help is actually your list design. If you don't know your rules that much, or you don't play that often, mm -hmm. limit the number of units you're taking so it's less yeah. to remember. Just just be like me, just take jet bikes. You know? Just take jet bikes. Yeah. So. <laughs> be a custodian player is what we're saying. That, that's our top tip. <laughs> just, just play custodians with jet bikes. It's all good. <laughs> um, you know, I played my, my Eldar, and we played one of ga our first games together, and I played my Eldar. It was just a fun game, but yeah. I took pretty much one of every unit. Mm. That game went on because I didn't know everything. And, and I'm sorts. asking you what everything does. Yeah, well. so it's, it's, it's worth, if you don't know your army that well, limit the number of units yeah. and, and know the units. Practice with them as well. Yeah. So you, it's slick, it just, it just works. And a second to that, you, you've got to have a game plan, haven't you? You've got to know what you're going to do. Yeah. Don't don't come to your turn and go, oh God, what am I going to do now? You should know it when your opponent's turn. Sit down, relax, and think, what the hell are you going to do? Yeah. And you you have that when you're constructing your list, the game yeah. plan for your list, essentially. Yeah. Um. So that's, that's that thing. And I think I find really useful. So I'm I'm really OCD about making crib sheets uh, because I'm, <laughs> I have this. an awful I have an awful memory, <laughs> and I'm really bad at having bought my own little laminator. But I have this um this clipboard. I have, and on the back of it, I have uh, a list of all my. my you got your own laminator. <laughs> my own laminator. Yeah, well, <laughs> I didn't buy it for forty k. It's bought for another purpose, but we'll talk about it another time. Uh, so I have all my units on the back here, so they're all ready to go. With just the key details there, rules that are quite tricky. So maybe like power for pain rules. Yeah. Something change for yeah, or if your opponent wants to see it, just to check yeah. something. It's just like it's there rather than rifling yeah. through. Obviously, have your codex as well because that's the, the key source. But I, I find it really useful just having that. I can flick it over, mm -hmm. and then on the other side here. So this is my Harlequin one that I've got, and I've got the broken down different troops. And I can keep a tally on here about how many wounds guys have taken because I just find that sometimes tycons like dice and stuff get lost or knocked over and stuff. But having a little tally thing on here, yeah. I can put my my opponent's name because I have a memory like a sieve. Uh, so by putting that on there, I can remember the name and my warlord traits and stuff. And it's all on one yeah. sheet that I can go to there. So yeah. I find that very useful. What I tend to have down because I, I do my own crib sheets as well. They're not laminated. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll get you to laminate them. Yeah. yeah, I can do that for you. Yeah, um, is have. Turn counter, so you'd be surprised how many times it's going, is this turn three or four? Always say it's turn four if you want to, like... <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, this is your other tactic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if in doubt, cheat. Um, so turn counters, mission, what the actual mission objectives are, so you actually remember, you're not trying to figure it all out. Um, yeah, I think they're the key things just to have down, so you just know what you're doing. Yeah. Many times. Tokens as well, actually, I find really useful. Like the yeah. command points and have those in sets yeah. ready to go as well. And for what psychic powers <laughs> you've cast and things. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think that's something you really do pre tournament. Yeah. Uh, so talk about actually the first stage uh, of the game, and that's actually knowing the mission, make sure you've got that down. Yeah. But then deployment. Um, the number of times I see guys going back and measuring on from the back edge every time or from the center about how far on, hey, just take a couple of moments at the beginning of the game measure out deployment and mark it down. I've got these little tokens here that mark out the deployment zone. Alternatively, you can just lay out dice yeah. across that area as well. It just takes that decision time and just gives you a bit more time to actually think about what you're actually deploying. Yeah. Any other ways you do that at all? No, I said, I, I think at deployment, you know whether you're going to have a slow game or not. If they drop 150 orcs on you, um, the chances yeah. are. It, what I tend to do at that stage is have a discussion with the opponent and go, look, we're probably going to have a bit of a slow game here, so I'm going to move your models for you if it's okay. Um, with their consent, don't just yeah. move them, you know, when they're not looking, but you know, just... <laughs> yeah, and all players are quite strong for this, and it's movement trays. 
John, yeah. I've, I've got shuffle them forward. Yeah, just shuffle those things forward. It's, it's always like World War Two uh, Air Force plotter things, a little yeah. pushing models across there with a stick. You know, just use that to save time. And it's, yeah. it's, it's incumbent on you to not take up all the time because it gets really boring as the opponent sat there waiting for a yeah. thousand models to be moved. So basically, you me measure the front ones and then just shove everything behind, is what yeah. I do. Yeah, because generally. Because it's, it's the front ones which matter. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. that's something you do that. Yeah. And if you are a slow player, because everyone's different speeds of playing, don't take a bloody army which you can't play in time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh, People who just have old summoning as well, just creating more and more stuff. You know, you're just yeah. making this game really boring. Yeah. Right. Let's talk about dice. Yeah, dice are. So I'm, I'm obsessed with dice on the whole. Um, so I like to have good, clear dice. So I've got these ones that I bought from Bally's when I went to the um, LVO a couple of years ago, which are great. They're really clear. They're big. Um, you can alternatively they have. Uh, smaller dice, which are equally as clear as well, but oh, we should push our dice at this point. Oh, we're, we're, miss we're missing an opportunity. Here. We also have the oh. uh, D6 Evolution. The, these are the best dice. These are the best dice in the world. In the world ever. Yeah. Part yeah. two. Yeah. So <laughs> just make sure you have good clear dice. Um, yeah. There's nothing worse than guys have you have all the bloody symbols on the same thing. Have, have the same dice as well. Yeah. It's, it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So have ones for wounds. So if you're going to have green for wounds, have you know, your sort of girly pink dice for rolling and, yeah. and so forth. And the other thing is, met and have the correct number of dice. So if I've got custodies, I know I'm going to be rolling sixes or twelves for the shooting. Yeah. So just have them there ready. Yeah. And I, I, lots of guys. I mean, it's a dice rolling game. If you're playing casually, then we we love picking up. Oh, I've got so all the dice. <laughs> but it takes a finite amount of time to count out fifty three dice, and then. It, and then roll 53 dice, and then look through 53 dice, when yeah. actually what you can do... Is go, right, I'm going to roll, what, two lots of 20 and the 13 or something? Well, like no, I, personally, what I find, I find 12 a great number, because I can have them there in two groups of six. Mm. Often things work out to be part of that, or actually, tens. So I know I can take two dice off. If yeah. I've got 53 dice to roll, I'll just take 10 dice, I'll roll to hit, I'll pick up my misses, I'll then roll to wounds, so put those on the side, take my wounds and say, hey, that's three wounds. Get your opponent to keep count of how many Keep count, yeah. and then roll those again to hit, take away the misses, and then so we're just at five times. It's actually, you know, once you get in the flow, no, no, I'm not going to do this five times, yeah. but once you get in the flow, it's actually a lot quicker than counting out 50 dice, yeah. because you, know, you end up cheating yourself of one or two dice as well, and then um, it just it speeds up your whole game that way as well, mm. and it makes it clearer as well to it gives your opponent time to actually pick out those misses as well with you. Yeah. And sometimes it can be in your benefit as well because you actually have more time to see more hits that you've got. Yeah. Right. So let's, uh, let's talk about dice. Do you have any dice tips at all? Um, just, just roll lots of sixes. I just find. lots of sixes, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Th these roll sixes a lot. A lot. So yeah, <laughs> don't, them. don't use them for leadership. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, other good things as well I find is that um, I have lots of deep striking units now. And it can be really cumbersome to spend time measuring all these things out yeah. because you have to be nine inches from here. Actually, these are from H Sigma. However, you can make your own sort of sticks up which are nine inches. Yeah. And then you can place them uh, tip to tip from other units and then you can see that actually I can deploy from that point onwards as well. I just look at look at you cheating, look. <laughs> right. So this is get, where's... Get, get three sticks <laughs> yeah. to make sure you are Sufficiently clear of all those guys. Uh, and you can get those little templates which have the two inch and the nine inch marker on them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really good. Again, really handy just to speed up your game and that sort of yeah. sense as well. Um, so um, so should we talk about what you do when you do get slow played? Yeah. yeah. So I think the first tip, right, is call them out and go, you motherfucker, you're slow playing me. And then chin them across the table. Yeah. Flip the table. I find yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. It's very difficult though if you're playing... You've you got to get a whole table. flip, you know, if you, don't, if you don't get the flip right, it just flops back down, it doesn't look, it's not good. Yeah. So I, I think that's our top tip for it. <laughs> Second tip is kill lots of units. Yep. Because if they're a slow play and they haven't got any units, that's good. helps, yeah. Right. Or, or really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sensible tips. Sensible tips, <laughs> right. Um, just talk to the initially. Just talk to your opponent. Say, hey, it, it, going a little bit slow. Then, unfortunately, I think we're going to start running out of time. Can you speed up your game? Is there any way I can help you speed up your yeah. game? Because most of the time, to be fair, it's not intentional, is it? No, no. It's it's guys, you know, you, you've got them on the back foot. They're not quite sure what to do. That they're, they're taking the time with things. Uh, it's very rare that someone's going to slow play you intentionally. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, inform the opponent, offer them to help move models and so forth. Yeah. Just by telling them, you're going to speed up, a lot of people speed up. Yeah. Don't do a turn either and don't um, offer to place models and go, oh, sorry mate, your, your turn's up. <laughs> be... I used to be always going to be famous for that. <laughs> <laughs> so just, just be a good guy in that sense. Yeah, you know, it's yep. moving. yeah absolutely. If you, if you address it in the right way, you keep people relaxed um, and they'll... They'll, they'll speed up. Um, if you genuinely are having a problem, um, inform a, a TO early. Yep. Um, there's no point telling them after the game it was a slow play because there's nothing you can do. Yeah. And tell them at the start, they'll come over, they'll keep an eye on things, they'll intervene if they need to. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I, I think that's it. Um, yeah, so I, I think one more thing I like to, to think about as well, actually, is that over the course of a tournament, you're playing five games, and for a lot of time, it's, it's actually quite a bit of physical exertion in, in some respects. Um, so take a moment when you're, it's not your turn to sit down, and it's amazing how much that cumulative fatigue can have an effect. By, by taking a chance to sit down, you're resting, which will actually make your decision process a lot quicker throughout yeah. your games. That's a good tip. Right, guys, um, comment below, let us know what you think about for, for slow playing. Um, we should totally do a, uh, a video on how to slow play. Yes, next one. Yeah. Next video. Yeah, how, how do you to slow play your enemy. How to slow play like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> I am all over this one. Oh, yes, this is your lead on that one. All right, take care, guys. See you next time.